here we are again this time we're going to talk about um, the carbonyl compounds that are a little bit more oxidized specifically carboxylic acids amides and esters all right so starting with carboxylic acids so first things first you do have a carbonyl bond present so you do see that strong peak appearing roughly in the 1700 region uh, now notice that this value is a little bit lower than what we saw for the aldehydes and ketones there we were looking at values of about 1720 1730 these ones are going down to about 1710 roughly speaking and what you are also beginning to see is that because you have an OH functionality present in your carboxylic acid, you have that peak above 3000 and it is kind of broad. Now, this one is a little bit misleading because generally speaking, carboxylic acids have very broad um, OH peaks in, in the IR spectrum. So this is another example. This is a um, this is chloroacetic acid and you still have that peak that strong peak for the carboxylic acid the carbonyl carbon at about 1700 but you also have this strong broad peak above 3000 now in this case the peak is so broad in fact that it goes all the way down to almost 2000 um, and, and so this can happen for for um carboxylic acids in fact it kind of really depends on how you prepare your sample uh, for samples that are liquids, you tend to have a lot of major broadening happening. Uh, solids can be a little bit more well behaved. Uh, sometimes you can create the material as a gas, in which case your IR spectrum is going to be much more subdued and you will not see as broad a peak. But technically speaking, these liquid samples, these liquid carboxylic acids can have really broad peaks. Uh, uh, now, if you also use concentrated versus dilute solution that can have an effect on how these peaks look but generally speaking you will see a broad peak that starts above 3000 in addition to the carbonyl peak and both of those things will be indicative of having a carboxylic acid present okay so here's another example once again at about 17 the 17 teens uh, you have your strong carbonyl peak and you have the broad peak that starts above 3000 and in this case also happens to go past till about 2400 right but the key idea is that you start above 3000 with a broad peak so broad peak plus carbonyl bond implies carboxylic acid in this particular structure we also happen to have a nitrile functionality and that cn triple bond does show up at about 22 100 inverse centimeters so we see that feature as well so you don't have to just have the one multiple bond or excuse me the one functional group present you can have multiple functional groups and you will see provided they don't get overlap entirely you will see the different peaks for the different functional groups that your molecule possesses so that's kind of nice to see in this example all right now another thing to also be aware of is that uh, carbonyl compounds and this is not exclusive to carboxylic acids but um, we're going to use the carboxylic acid example right here to emphasize this notice that yes we do have the broad peak that you know kind of starts kind of starts above 3000 uh, you can kind of see right here now this is not as broad as the ones i showed you before because this sample um it's um a little bit better behaved probably this was prepared in dilute solution so you don't see as drastic of a, a broadening happening but um you do have that peak f corresponding to the carbonyl carbon except that this time around it's a much lower values it's down to 1690 roughly speaking and the reason this is happening is because of a resonance effect that you have to be aware of now carboxylic acids because of the nature of having this oxygen this OH functionality bound to the carbonyl carbon, you can bring the electrons of that oxygen to the carbonyl and break that CO double bond, basically kick away those electrons to that oxygen and form the following resonance structure. Now, if you just pay attention to the carbonyl carbon here, what this resonance structure is telling you is that you can actually partly break that double bond and make it more like a one and a half bond as opposed to a double bond, which in essence serves to weaken the bond. 
but this will be true for pretty much any carboxylic acid. Uh, now that explains why the carbonyl peaks tend to be a little bit lower in wave number values than those of ketones or aldehydes. But it doesn't explain why for this specific sample we went down to you know 1690. Well, that's where the benzene ring comes in. You will notice that in this structure we have a multiple bond right next to the carbonyl peak. So we could also do a resonance structure. We could literally bring this entire pi bond over to this carbon to break apart the carbonyl. And in doing so, we will create the following resonance structure, which technically has a carbocation presence. It's not the best you know, structure. And by all means, this is the main resonance structure that facilitates the um, electronic features of the molecule. But this one provides us an, an explanation as to why you were lowering it so much lower than most other um, carboxylic acids is the fact that the benzene ring, the aromatic ring can provide its pi bond to break that CO double bond, at least partially. And so this is what you can use as an explanation. It's a resonance explanation of what's happening to that CO bond. And it's not exclusive to carboxylic acids. This can also happen with aldehydes. It can also happen with ketones. So just keep that in mind. You will lower the wave numbers for those values. OK, so now this brings us to the amides. We're going to start with amides that have two hydrogens bound to the nitrogen. Now, one feature, sometimes it's a little bit hard to see. And once more, this has to do with how the sample was prepared. But one feature that you may observe, generally speaking, is that if you do have two hydrogens bound to the nitrogen of your amide, you're going to have two peaks arising above 3,000. And the peaks are also going to be kind of broad, perhaps not as broad as the carboxylic acids, but they're going to be broad nonetheless. And you can see here they have two peaks uh, just, just about in this sample. But you also have the carbonyl carbon that does show up as a strong peak. But notice the value now. This is down to 1670. This is even lower than the carboxylic acid uh, with the benzene ring. We'll explain that in a moment. But notice what happens when you replace uh, one of the hydrogens with an alkyl group. And uh, now, technically speaking, here you could have two conformations because the amide bond is actually uh, trigonal planar because there's a big electron donation from nitrogen to the carbonyl bond. Uh, due to the fact that nitrogen is more basic than oxygen. And so you can actually see in this case uh, two peaks arising from this thing. Now, generally speaking, though, in most samples that I've seen in the past, if you do have one hydrogen and only one hydrogen bound to nitrogen, you will only see one broad peak above 3000. And these are somewhat close to what we see for the alcohols, which may make it a little bit difficult to distinguish from each other. But the broad peak above 3000 uh, not super broad like carboxylic acids, but broad peak about 3,000 in combination with your peak at about, you know, the mid 1600s, maybe a little bit higher than that, is indicative of having an amide. And of course, if your nitrogen contains no hydrogens bound to it, then you do not have broad peaks above 3,000, but you will still see that peak, that strong peak for the carbonyl carbon in the mid 1600s. OK, so why is it that the carbonyl carbon of amides are falling so far below compared to carboxylic acids or the ketones or the aldehydes? Well, the reason has to do once more with the fact that nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen. And uh, what that means is that it's not going to be holding on to its electrons as tightly. Another way to put it is that nitrogen is more basic than oxygen. So compared to the carboxylic acid, nitrogen is more than willing to give its electrons to the neighboring carbonyl carbon and break that carbonyl carbon bond. Now, to the extent that this happens, it's a lot greater than when it happens in the carboxylic acid counterpart. And so you're going to expect to see the carbonyl carbon bond broken for a greater amount of time uh, compared to the carboxylic acid. And because of that, you are lowering the strength of that bond. And in essence, you're lowering the frequency at which you will need to absorb. So that's a, an interesting you know, trait of electronegativity slash acid base character of the atom in question. All right, so now let's take a look at the ester and see what happens there. <laughs> 
Okay, so with esters, you do not have an oxygen-hydrogen bond anymore because the oxygen right here has to be connected to a carbon in order for this to be an ester. So you do not see those broad peaks above 3000. But what you do see is a strong peak for the carbonyl bond. Um, but this peak is actually kind of strong. It's um, kind of on part with the cyclic ketones that we talked about earlier um, in the previous video. And uh, so now we have um, a value that's roughly in the mid 1700s. Okay, so this is uh, methyl acetate. Let's take a look at another one. Uh, so this is butyl. This is a butyl ester. And notice that once again, the carbonyl carbon falls much higher. It's close to 1740. And compared to the carboxylic acids that were roughly at the 17, you know, 1720, 1710s, um, what's happening with the esters? Well, what you need to keep in mind is that when you're looking at carboxylic acids, hydrogen is a lot less electronegative than oxygen. So the electron density of this OH bond is definitely given mostly to the oxygen. And that makes this oxygen very electron rich. And so having more electron density on that oxygen means that you can actually break this carbonyl bond more strongly via resonance. On the other hand, your ester group uh, substitutes the hydrogen with a carbon and carbon is not as uh, electronegative or less electronegative than hydrogen, right? So it, it, this is got a little bit more electronegativity associated with it. So the difference in electronegativity of these bonds is not as big. So the delta minus on the oxygen is decrease. And what that basically means is that the extent to which you break the double bond is not going to be as great. So for any given period of time, you're going to have more CO double bond character in the ester compared to the carboxylic acid, just because of that change in electronegativity of this element here on the end. Um, so that's um, not an interesting feature. Once again, we're kind of dealing with induction effects, resonant effects, and hybridization effects to explain all of the different trends that we're seeing in IR spectroscopy. Okay, in the next video, I'm going to finish up talking about IR spectroscopy by uh, looking at the aromatic compounds. So I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.